everyone, my name is Katie and welcome to our week six of our series, A Life in the Spirit. I hope you are enjoying your Connect Group meeting um, and we are basically going through a series on the book of Romans in the Bible um, and today's topic is certainty by the Spirit and we're going to be reading from Romans 8 verse 1 to 17. So if you have your Bibles with you, feel free to open them find Romans 8 uh, before we dig into the word. Um, I just want you to picture you are driving on the freeway, okay? You are in your dream car, whether it is a Ferrari or a Suzuki Swift, whatever it may be, you are in your dream car and you are driving as fast as you can or you're allowed to. And a man comes into the middle of the freeway and he puts his hand out in front of you to stop your car. But he is dressed in a flat cap, a chain around his neck. He has shades on. Who knows why? Because it's the middle of the night. Um, And he wants to stop your car. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to come to a complete stop. I'm going to try to go straight at him and hope he moves out the way. Or as soon as I get to him, quickly swerve around him. Because I'm not stopping for someone like that. But... On another side of the spectrum, if you see a guy standing in the middle of the freeway with his hand out, but he's shaking and he's knock kneed, he's maybe a bit hunched over and he looks very nervous, but he has a police cap on, a police uniform, the police badge and his cop car on the side of the road, what are you going to do? I'm going to come to a complete stop because I know that he has the whole of the government and the whole of South Africa backing him, right? And as I was thinking of that illustration, so that so often that is like us, we can feel insignificant, we can feel like we don't have authority, but when we stand up for Jesus, we don't just have the whole church backing us and our friends backing us, but we have the whole of heaven backing us, which is a beautiful picture to see. Just like that cop had the whole of the government backing him, we have the whole of heaven backing us. And in the same way, God has sent the Holy Spirit to all us believers. And he testifies, what the Holy Spirit does is he testifies that we are children of God. And if we ever feel insecure or if we ever feel worried about whether or not we are children of God, what we can hold on to is that the Holy Spirit can confirm that we are God's children. Um, And so I want to start off with this point. Our adoption is ordained by the Father. Our adoption into God's family is ordained by the Father. It's purchased by the Son and it's applied by the Spirit. And that's such an incredible thing to know that it's ordained by our Father in heaven. He predestined this before we were even born. It was purchased by Jesus on the cross. We didn't have to pay a cent for it. And it was applied by the Spirit. We get to live this life daily with the Spirit. Um, And so I wonder if you could turn to Romans 8 verse 14. The next point is being adopted Being an adopted child of God provides the believer with a new identity. And in verse 14, it says, For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear. Rather, the Spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And I love how it says that we're led by the Spirit because we're God's children. We get to be led by the Spirit. But it ends off by saying that the spirit you received brought about adoption to sonship. And this thing on sonship brings so much freedom because you know your place in the family. I've recently moved out of home. um, And whenever I go back to my parents' home, I still have a key to the front door. The dogs still remember me, thank goodness. And when I walk into the house, I can open the fridge, grab the leftovers that they had the night before, sit on the couch and just enjoy myself because I know my place in the family. And that's the same with God's family. We can approach his throne room with boldness because we know that we are his daughter. We know that we are his son. Um, And so I'm just going to move on to my next point. It says being an adopted child of God provides the believer with a new intimacy. So not only do we have a new identity in Jesus, but we have this new intimacy. In verse 19, it says, and by him we cry, 
Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. I love that it says Abba, Father, and it just shows when Jesus calls his father, Abba, Father, as well. It's such a personal way of calling him Father. It shows his personal relationship with him. And I just want to encourage you today that God wants us to call him Abba, Father, in a sense of saying, I want this intimacy with you. I want you to be face to face with just you and for you to be totally consumed with who he is. And it goes on in verse 17, it says, Now if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. Which leads me to my last point. It says, being an adopted child of God provides the believer with a new inheritance. And how beautiful is that inheritance that we get to hold on to? This inheritance that we co-heirs with Christ. It's such a beautiful thing. So I hope you enjoy your discussion in your connect group. That's all from me. Enjoy the rest of your day.